Okay, so I have logged in to my teacher Flipgrid on a computer and to kind of walk you through the basics. Um, I don't plan on at this point getting into mixtapes or grid pals or the disco library or the shorts at this point. We're just going to focus on my grids just to get you started. Um, so first, let's go around button wise. Um, up here in the upper right, that's how you can get to your profile, get to the help center. You can look at achievements or integrations, which we'll talk about later. But basically, if you need to change something about your profile, log out or get to the help center. That's your upper right. There is a getting started guide if you want to walk through their getting started guide. But I'm going to give you kind of how I started and that way maybe it can help you. Um, first off, language. They use the word grid. Uh, it essentially means classroom. So every grid you have is a classroom. So grid equals classroom. Um, I have made a few grids just to kind of show people how it looks, but you'll notice other than kind of the poppy graphics, there's not a lot here in terms of something that's kind of confused. Um, let's just first start out with how to make a grid. So you add a new grid. This is going to be, uh, call it train. Now, you're going to select a grid type. School email. So if you want them to log in with their email. If you want it to be IDE based, um, if you need help with that, we would have to kind of set that up. You have to upload a CSV file. So there has to be a spreadsheet and things like that. Or share the grid with your network and the world. Um, if we go into the learn more tab here, if we look at the PLCs, if you're looking to amplify a global community, it makes sharing easy. Anyone with your flip code can check out the amazing videos from your community. To record videos, participants will need a Microsoft or Google account. So just to be clear, if you want them to record and respond, then they need a Google account, school or personal. Um, if you just want them to see this stuff, then they would just kind of go up into this area. So my recommendation would be to go school email. You can tinker with your flip code if you want and you press next. It automatically senses our domain, so it puts it in there. You'll notice a Microsoft or Google account is required, and we could add multiple domains if we wanted, uh, if educators and students were gonna come from a different domain. What does that mean? If they were gonna be a different school at hopewell.org or something, you could theoretically add them and they could be part of that if that's something you thought was cool. Once you're ready to go, your grid is ready. You can copy that code and throw it in your Google Classroom or an email if you wanted. You could share it to your Google Classroom right away. You could share it on Remind or one of the other options like copy the embed code into your Google Classroom website or something. Or I'm sorry, your Google site. So we go to our grid and now we're looking at our grid. So the top hasn't changed. All we're doing now is looking at our grid. Think of like when you're looking at your Google Classroom. So that was how to make a grid. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about kind of how to manage your grid once you're here.